this girl who's super glamorous and obviously gorgeous sits down next to me. That's sweet. But you, I, th- I thought you weren't sure if you uh, <laughs> Not really my type. Welcome to Dear Shandy. <laughs> it's a, a very official operation here. Andy and I are in our kitchen and there are uh, wires and electronics strewn across our stovetop. <laughs> and yeah, we're, I gotta say, pretty flattered at how this has been so requested. Um, I feel like people just sort of want to know about our relationship and our marriage and what we think about relationships. I happen to think we do have good opinion, good opinions about relationships. You'd probably agree with me. Yeah, I think we do. Yeah, we have pretty good takes on our friends' relationships. I think you especially, like you are never wrong. But I think it's about experiencing a lot of of bad relationships and making a lot of mistakes. Oh, absolutely. I feel like every yeah. time you... Any, any good relationship is usually a result of having had bad relationships and therefore having right. the information. The best therapists are those that are b- bonkers, right? <laughs> yeah, that's true. You've said that for a while now yeah. and I, you've dated even therapists you and you teach, feel like... You teach what you know, right? Yeah. So so here we are. <laughs> here we know about making mistakes and what, yes. goes, what can go wrong, pitfall. I also think a big factor in our relationship being... You know, I, I think a relationship is pretty healthy and uh, it has to do with meeting at the time in our lives when we met. But anyway, I don't want to get ahead of ourselves. Uh, Dear Shandy will be a very relaxed podcast. We're not in a pro studio. It's just us talking <laughs> and we can take questions if people have them. I've actually had many people write me describing their situations with some guy and wanting your take on it. So Hmm. I feel like it's about time that we have a place for those questions to go. Um, Not just for you, though. For me, too. I think that I also give good advice. Mainly mainly you. (laughs) mm. I'm just sidekick. (laughs) But today, uh, because it's the first episode, we thought the best way to intro us to the world as a podcast is to talk about how we met which is quite frankly, the most asked question I think I get. Do you, do you get asked that a lot? <laughs> yes, I have been asked that question. <laughs> Probably not as much as me because people got to know me on a reality dating show. Well, I mainly get asked that question by random people who recognize me in the street. As being my husband? Yeah. That's so funny. Isn't yeah. that funny how like, it's been six plus years since I was on that show? Yeah. Yeah. It's crazy. Instagram. It's all about Instagram. I still get it. Those 15 minutes would have faded a long time ago. Yeah. And I don't know. I think you made a pretty big impact. <laughs> we should another time talk about the time you watched my season with me. That was kind of funny. <laughs> you were a good sport about that. You insisted actually. Yeah. It it's great. not like I was like, let's watch my season. <laughs> <laughs> well, why wouldn't I want to watch your season? I agree, but you'd be amazed at how many partners are not totally cool with it. Like it's a little weird, you know, watching the person you're with make out with someone else sure. on, on TV, but you're very relaxed about such things. Or, or a turn on, depending on how you look at it. <laughs> we'll get to that throughout Dear Shandy, I'm sure. But today we are talking about how we met. We're going to, yes. <laughs> we'll talk about the ins and outs of it, and I, I guess we'll try not to make it sound too romantic, but it was really romantic. I just don't want it to sound braggy. I just really love our meeting story. It was good. It was organic. Nice. <laughs> it was. Okay, so I guess we'll go back to the beginning. It's March 2014. Mm-hmm. Which day is it? I actually don't know. Is really? It, is it the 29th or the 30th? 29th. You got married on the 30th of, uh, of January. Uh, I always get confused. Yeah. I always forget which one's which. But married meaning city hall. City hall marry. Yeah, we did a city oh, hall did marry. I, was that a spoiler? Nah, I mean, people <laughs> people can know by now. We did city hall first and then we had our wedding on a later date. But I don't, I think lots of people actually do that. Maybe they don't wait as long as we did, but. 
I don't think it's uncommon. Anyway, we keep going off topic. Okay, so it's March 29th. 29th. <laughs> nice. Good good recollection. <laughs> good short-term memory. Yeah. 2014. And yeah, do you want to like each tell our side of the story? Or do you want to just tell the story together? I think we could tell it together. Okay. It'll probably take do, less long. Do you want me to start my I don't end? want to lose people. No, yeah, we gotta we gotta pick this up. <laughs> no, we've already been rambling. <laughs> Everyone's left already. Yeah. Like two people left. Yeah. Um so for me, it was just a, a sad I had gone out the night before and I was kind of Really? Yeah, I, got I didn't out. actually know that. You like partied the night before? I don't think like hardcore, but enough that I was like Saturday, I'm I'm kind of, you know, I'm done. Oh, I'm, I'm, okay. You were planning I'm just taking on it easy. I'm probably okay. taking it easy unless something really good comes up. Okay. But I had, I had just recently gotten out of a relationship and, you know, I it was just when Tinder was like really getting its feet under it and all my friends and people were like, oh my God, this Tinder. I was like, I want to see what's going on with Tinder. Yeah. So I go on, I set up an account and I'm just scrolling around and right away there was this girl I saw. I was like, okay, I'll start talking to her. I was like, hey, you know, what's up? Wait, <laughs> so she was one of your first ever Tinder? Yeah. Right swipes? Correct. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. Okay. You can go on. So, um, I just chatting, very boring chat, like, hey, what's you doing? It wasn't interesting at all. And then I um I said, What are you up to tonight? And she said, I'm going to this um benefit for ocean animals down in Tribeca. And I was sort of jokingly just said, Okay, I'll meet you there. And then she didn't think it was a joke. So she was like, yeah, sure. Here's the address. And I'm going to be there around this time. I was like, oh. I, I got to say, I like this exchange already. I mean, even though I never met this girl and I do have her to thank for introducing me to you. Um, I just hate those online dating conversations that are like winding around and you they never end up with an actual meet. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's like, don't show me your chat banter. Right, right. Let's just meet. I also want to rewind. Like this was not, I think I made it sound like this was my first Tinder experience of all time. <laughs> okay. I have oh to, no, you it, had already. It was not. I, I had dabbled in Tinder, but, but recently, like it had been. A couple weeks. Uh, like, yeah, two weeks, three okay. weeks top. So, okay. so anyway, Saturday. <laughs> dabbled. Dabbled. <laughs> it's a light word. But um, so Saturday afternoon, I'm just chatting. She tells me she's going to be this place. I think she gave me her number, like the whole thing. Okay. So. I had no intention of going, none. Uh -huh. So the day goes by and I did what I used to do a lot back then, which is order a, like one of those corporate ZD trays. You really love the corporate ZD. Well, it was like, great. Fun fact. In the I store. love ZD. ZD is a great food. I don't know if I knew what ZD, like I have eaten all types of pasta, but ZD is like not even top 10. I don't think. Well, that's where like we penne and rigatoni are way higher on the list than ziti. Yeah, but ziti is basically penne. There's no difference. It's just it's a ziti is it connotes like it's in something delicious, like <laughs> like baked cheese so and. Some, we should get a ziti sponsorship. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, yeah. Oh, actually, you know what I realized? It wasn't ziti. It was penne alla vodka. But it doesn't matter. It's You're not giving penne the credit it deserves. Penne and ziti. It, I actually don't know this, but I think ZD is penne when it's put into a baked operation. Okay, we'll have people either confirm. Yeah, we or, would like to know this. <laughs> to the mob. This is very important, okay. especially in today's climate. So, um, so I had this giant. I get this giant corporate tray because it gives me a dinner, a, a huge dinner, and the next day I have lunch. That is such like a male perspective on eating, but continue. It's really lazy. No salad, nothing. Just literally a ginormous plate of carbohydrates. Yeah, a tin. So I'm eating this, and I and I really tear in. Like I eat more than the dinner share of it. <laughs> Going into a lot of detail. Yeah, but this is important. Okay, okay. It's leading up to something. Okay. So I was like, I, I was comatose. Like it was, I was totally food coma and I was on the couch. I was watching TV. I was so happy. It was raining. Like I cannot say enough. And you'll, I know you'll back me on this. It was the worst rainstorm I had seen in New York in years. And to this day, still the heaviest rainstorm I can recall in memory. I mean, obviously I'm not going to disagree with you on that because I think the rain is one of the reasons that makes our meat kind of special. Yeah. It's this a, was the kind of rain that deters you from exiting your apartment uh, at like, all. It, 
it's an excuse. Like if someone's yeah. like, Hey, you know, I, I canceled, I can't go see you. They totally understand. Yeah. They're not like, Oh, come on. It's just a little rain. They're like, no, I get it. It's, yeah. <laughs> no, they would be like embarrassed for even asking because of the rain. Yeah. They'd be a jerk. Yeah. Like it's umbrella like, you're breaking. You're going to invite me out on a night like this? Yeah. It's What's insulting. wrong with you? It's, it's rude. It is rude. Is you cannot make it more than three blocks with an intact umbrella in this storm. It's a big, anyway, these, all these <laughs> details are important and you'll see why. <laughs> Very important. So I'm on the couch comatose. It's pouring rain, pouring rain outside. And for some reason, I'm thinking it's like 930. I'm thinking I want to go to this party. I'm going to go to the party, you know, this fundraiser. <laughs> um, and I don't know why. But I, something was calling me. So Wait, it was because you wanted to like bone this girl I felt, or meet her. Maybe you thought she was something special I'm or you were craving a night out. I feel like Murphy's law is very strong. I believe strongly in the law of Murphy. <laughs> and I and I felt that this was the night I was going to. I know this sounds like I mean, like you were newly a, single. It's a weekend. You can just say it. Like if you want to go out and try and hook up with. Oh, I'm girl. not ashamed of saying I wanted to, the reason I would want to go out is to meet a girl or to have sex with said girl or another girl. OK, but my point is, is that it was the worst night to go out. And therefore, I thought this is the night where you meet someone like for just because I believe in the law. Wow. Murphy's law. I, I think it's it really works. So the, the least likely night you're going to meet somebody is the night you meet that person. Wow. I strongly believe in that with everything and, and not just meeting people, but I, I'm a strong believer. You so never I, actually told me that. Like, I know how you feel about Murphy's Law, but I never really thought about how it applied to that night. Okay, continue. Yeah, I'm, I'm, that's, that's true. Do you want me to keep going on my side or you want, to put, you want me to pass the football over to you for a second? <laughs> yeah, I guess I'll go... I mean, I, for my side of the story, I think it, a big factor was there's two major factors. One, I didn't live in the city at the time. I was here temporarily, even though I had previously lived here for five years. I was back in town with a Met cover contract. And so I was living here for a while, like five weeks or so, maybe six weeks. And so there's automatically that element of like, you know, when you live in the city and then you leave and then you come back, you're like, oh, I want to make every second worth it. You know, I, even in those six weeks, I probably went to more shows and went to more parties than I did in the, you know, the time that I lived here, just because you want to make the most of it. And, you know, especially when you missed it while you were gone. So there was that, but also I was having like a really shitty day. I, uh, th I think I've told you this, like I was, it was a cover contract. So I was covering someone else and I had a cover rehearsal that day. And I just remember like feeling really good about how I sang it and how I acted it. And I just felt like frustrated. I was at a point in my career, I was frustrated. And I just, I have never usually felt this way when I cover, because usually I'm just excited to have whatever contract it is, even if it's a cover contract. But it's- Ask the Met. Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, this was my contract. second Met cover contract. And the first one, I was like, I'm good. Like, right. I'm just thrilled to be here. I'm happy to, like, be in the wings and learn the role and, like, never go on. But in this case, I just had one of those days where I was, like, frustrated that I would not get to perform this when I felt like it showed what I could do. And it was the kind of role that I felt like should be my Met debut. It was, like, a small role and it was perfect for my voice. So... I was just having one of those days where you're just kind of frustrated. So those two kind of play hand in hand. And of course, um, it was not raining yet, actually. Earlier that day, it was not raining at all. And I made friends, uh, I made plans with my girlfriends, Miranda and Alexa, who would later be my bridesmaids, mm -hmm. um, to get dinner, maybe go out downtown. And so, yeah, should, should I continue? Let's yeah, start. we okay. should get to the point where we're motivating to go out the door. That's where I stop. Okay. <laughs> so you should go to that point. Too. Okay. So as the evening progresses, you know, the rain's getting worse and worse and worse. And Miranda, who at the time lived in um, Bushwick, was like, oh, sorry, girls, like I'm out. Like this rain's too much. I'm not, I'm not doing this. And Alexa, meanwhile, lived sort of in the neighborhood. And she was like, okay, I'll just come out for like, a drink, but like, I don't think I'm up for, I'm up for going downtown. Oh, oh, I didn't say how I knew about this event. So I was invited to the same benefit by a guy named Jonathan, who I had met like three years before that on a match date. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we met on match 
And I think we went on one or two dates. I'm not sure. It wasn't really a romantic thing, but we remained platonic friends. You ever kiss that guy? I think so. Wow. Memorable. (laughs) Anyway, Jonathan's a good guy. We don't want to throw him under the bus. No, I honestly, I I think honestly, I I went through a phase where I would go on dates and just kiss a guy just because I felt like awkward about being so clearly not into them. And then I would just power fade after. I'm not saying that's the right thing. Oh, you gave them a sympathy kiss. Well, also it was partly curiosity. Hmm. Like you kind of just are curious if the kiss will change your perspective on them. Because sometimes it does. Have you ever kissed a guy just to get rid of him? Like, you know, he wants a kiss and he'll probably go away and you don't have to talk to him again. A kiss rarely gets rid of a guy. Usually a kiss Sex makes gets them... rid of a guy. <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, yeah, a, ki- a kiss. It, for me, a kiss was always sympathy isn't the right word. It's usually curiosity. Oh. Just because I'm like, I haven't had the best time in this date. Like, I don't think anything's going here. But like, maybe the kiss will like open a side to this person. That's happened a few times with me where a kiss, like they were oh, such yeah. a good kiss. So there was like really good, weirdly good sexual chemistry that came out only when you would kiss. And before that, you were sort of like, eh, Well, yeah, like maybe the conversation's a little dry or whatever. You're just not. Right. You're not vibing at that Got much. It. Hmm. But yeah. Anyway. I, that st- I still am not, I'm pretty sure I did, but we're talking three years before. Anyway, it's platonic. Yeah. And Jonathan was very, and probably still is very like finger on the pulse, like knew all the cool parties. And he invited me to this thing and I was like, perfect. I'll go with my girlfriends. It'll be fun. And then both of my girlfriends sort of dropped like flies, but Alexis still did meet me for that drink. Meanwhile, I was like, ready. I had my lipstick on, my updo in, and I was mm-hmm. like, I'm going out on this rainy night because like I wanted to, you know, live my New York life to the fullest. But for girls, let's focus like the 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 you were dressed and made up for girls night out, right? Not for meeting guys. <laughs> you always love to differentiate the two. But you were. You know, men are, I'm sorry. It's like to even say to dress for men is like is that even a thing? All it is is wearing something short and tight and obvious. But I'm saying your intention when you did your makeup and dressed up was that you were going to have a night with girls, not to go meet guys. I have never and probably will never alter how I dress in terms of meaning. Like if in my opinion, if a guy's going to be interested in me, it should be regardless of like whether no. I have like a dramatic. I up- think. Do you know what I mean? No, like, I mean, you're extremely good about that. I've never seen anything like it. Like you never pander to men in the way you dress. I would say your version of like a girl going out with like a tight, you know, red dress and you know, like red. the whole like like white like six inch heels is you letting your hair down. <laughs> Literally, like you wearing your hair down is like you dressing like a complete slut. <laughs> That's your version. It's totally true. I just don't. I like to wear what I like to wear. And I've always been like that. And I want to. And it's it's not about like showing off my. Sometimes an outfit does show off my body and other times it doesn't. But I it has nothing to do with how men. Yeah. And I've definitely always been like that. But so, yeah, you would regard the outfit I was wearing that night. Should I describe the outfit? Sure. Okay. Really dark lipstick. I didn't have much eye makeup on. I had a big wooden swept up to, and I was wearing a kind of loose fitting sweater that was totally open back. Mm-hmm. Black fringe shorts right. that didn't really show much, but they were like kind of fun no. and cool. And they, they did that fun fringe thing when I moved. <laughs> You're like, I don't care. I had no idea what the <laughs> shape of your body was. I was just hoping for the best. And I had like sheer black tights and pumps. Yeah. I have saved... Every major part of that outfit because of past meeting. It's amazing how you remember that. Like I, you bring, like, I have a general idea of what you look like, but if like I was like being interrogated about what you wore that night and I had to draw a picture of it, it would be hilarious. I feel like all you would remember is the dark lipstick and. I would get all the colors wrong. Number one. Yeah. There, everything would be the wrong color. Yeah. Your eye makeup would be probably completely the opposite of what it was. The only thing I remember, as you said, is the, is the dark lipstick. Because you didn't like it. And the fact that your hair was up. I don't Those like. Those are two things that you don't. Do not like, like dark lipstick. And you prefer my hair down. And I do prefer your hair down. Yeah. And I prefer uh, tube top, preferably <laughs> j- jewel tone. Just kidding. I don't. That's not true. But the tube top is probably not that far from the truth. Like, you, basically, men want to see as much of your body. No, and no. get the best idea of your body 
before they of course uh, it's can you imagine if men were expected like if it's like oh you have to wear these tight pants that show how much of a bulge you have well, I don't think, but I don't think women are interested specifically in the size of a man's package. Like that's not the foremost oh. concern. <laughs> no, I know that they are. No, that's true. Actually, I take that back. There, There is some concern about yeah, that. I, I think it, they're just, I don't think they need it to be giant though. They just want to make sure it's not tiny. And there's no way to really show that through clothing because you may be a shower or a grower. Yeah. So pretty much a woman, um, all a man has to do is wear something that's t- fitting enough that you know he doesn't have a pot belly or like, you know, whatever. It's pretty easy to tell whether a man's not in terrible We've shape. We've gone on such a tangent. It's important, though. <laughs> it is Very important. Very important. Um, important topic. Where were we? So anyway, you were dressing up for your girlfriends. You, you were ready to yeah, go you out. You feel, yeah, t- it necessary to mention that I was dressed for girls. Well, it is because... I was dressed for a, a Saturday night out. Everything I'm pointing out is important for later because it's one of the reasons why it was unlikely that we met. Are, wait, are you saying that if I had worn something short and tight? No, I'm saying been... that I almost never hit on girls who are wearing super dark lipstick. It doesn't matter what they it's look like. It's very specific. It's a thing. I just have never liked it. Okay. All right. So we'll continue back to your side of the story. You're gearing up to go. Okay. So I'm, I'm, now I've made this decision <laughs> that despite all the odds, I'm going out and I don't feel like it. And I'm full and it's horrible weather, but I'm like, we're doing this. I'm going to this benefit for ocean animals. So I get dressed, I go out and within like five seconds, my umbrella is broken. Yeah. I mean, it's serious. Like a hurricane. Yeah, I feel like we cannot emphasize that part enough. No, seriously. If you listeners want to go to the fa- farmer's almanac, March 29th, <laughs> 2014, it will say this was like, like the torrential. rainiest night ever. Yeah. So umbrella breaks. I'm already getting wet. I get to the subway and I'm on the steps of the subway and I get a text from a girl I had had a date with, I believe, two nights before. And it was a good date and I liked her and I wanted more. Okay. And she te- you didn't have sex with her yet. I did. I made out with her. It was great. Okay. I was very like you wanted to have. Sex I with her. was sold well. Like I was ready for what came next. So <laughs> <laughs> whatever that was. So uh, I'm on the steps and I get a text from her. I'm on the steps of the subway and I get a text from her saying, "Hey, I'm in your neighborhood. What are you doing?" And it's like 10:30 at night. I'm like, you know, it's not like she's looking to go to a museum. So <laughs> for whatever reason. I thought about it, I thought about it, and I just like, no, I'm going to this benefit for ocean animals on the rainiest night of the year in Tribeca, which is a million miles away, on the subway at 1030 at night. I'm turning down, let's face it, like that was- What you thought was guaranteed. 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 <laughs> guaranteed. So closing the deal and not just sex, but also I liked, I liked, liked the girl. Yeah. Like I would have considered dating this girl for sure. Yeah. So I go in the subway. I say, no, sorry, like not tonight. Um, let's, let's do it next it's week. It's moments like that. Okay. Yeah. When you tell me that part of that story, I feel, I don't believe in fate or serendipity or a lot of things, but there is something very serendipitous about you meeting your wife the night you had guaranteed. Okay. What you perceive no, no, no. to have been guaranteed sex with a girl that you were like really into and that you had not had sex with yet. Just let me mention. And you were newly single yeah. after a two-year relationship. You know, there's just a lot of factors at play that I think oh. a lot of men, yourself included, would not turn down. What I thought about, to add to your amazement, was <laughs> when she texted me, I was like, this, and I know no one's going to believe this, but it's true. I said, <laughs> this is a sign. I'm being, not in a religious way, but there's some faith. There's like, this You're is a sign. I'm being tested. It was literally... Like, oh, you think you're going to this, you think you're so cool. You think you're going to brave the rain. You're going to brave the ZD and all of this stuff. And and, that, and you're going to get right in that subway and go down this benefit for ocean animals. No, I'm going to give you a guaranteed booty call from a girl you like, might date, and you haven't had sex with yet. Well, you say, bra- okay, uh, yeah. Bra- Thank bravo. <laughs> Thank you. Dear husband. You. Um, but when you say brave the ZD, you never really talked about how the ZD came into play at all. Oh, it just made you feel comatose. Oh, comatose. I ate like literally two and a half pounds of ZD with disgusting. cheese and everything. It was horrible. So, oh, and penny on a vodka. So it was like oh, yeah. heavy cream and come on, okay. no salad, <laughs> just pure carbs and okay. fat. Okay. <laughs> so 
And I had drank the night before. So, so anyway, I'm going to say something like, this is a test. I, I just, with a heavy heart, I said, let's do something. I Let's definitely get together next week, like for sure. And I really meant it. Yeah. And she was like, okay, I totally get it. Like, I'll talk to you soon. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> I feel like we're going into too much detail. No, no, no. <laughs> it's very, this, this is all important. Okay. This is super, super important. I, just, I hope it doesn't sound too self-indulgent, but I guess self-indulgent we're, we're talking for an hour about how we met it's a re- like we're assuming this is self-indulgent there's nothing unself-indulgent about okay. this we're definitely going into detail for anyone who ever was curious about what you ate the yeah, night sure, and sure. how many pounds of what you, uh, you wanted to know how we knew, we met <laughs> serves you right here's what you get okay <laughs> So, okay. So you get on the train. So I get on the train. Nothing interesting happened on the train. So I'm not going to. Oh, so the, don't forget. Uh, a friend also bailed on you. Right? Oh, I forgot. God, there's more detail. Sorry. <laughs> so my friend Alex, bless his soul. Yeah. Wonderful guy. He's a real flake though. And he knows it. He would admit it himself. Yeah. Um, we, I was looking for someone to go with me down there, but I didn't want to just be stuck. Like I knew she was with friends. Like I knew it wasn't like that. We weren't having like a full one-on-one date. I could tell she was going there with <laughs> someone. On yeah. One-on-one. <laughs> so, uh, I wanted a wingman. So I, I, it was a tough sell. It was, no one wanted to go out. So I called Alex and Alex was like, yeah, I'll totally go to that. And sure enough, at the last minute, uh, that's en- like while I was in my coma, while it was raining, while I'm, you know, prior to getting this booty call, Alex bails on me. Yeah. So I still go by myself, knowing no one's going to meet me On there. a super rainy night. On a super rainy and night. And we were both coming from the Upper West Side down to Tribeca, which is kind of... Far. God, this is so... It's like we are seven, just like six miles. We're <laughs> just like, this is such like no, no, no. emotional masturbation. I mean, a lot of podcasts are... That's true. That's I, you know what? I'll give you that. Yeah. I'll give you that. That's true. Yeah. Okay. So you then arrive at the venue. So I arrive at the venue and I get there and it's a fifty dollar cover for me. <laughs> and no drinks, by the way, included in that. And I about, it's a benefit, ocean animal. I know, but I didn't I didn't quite focus on the benefit part. I thought it was just like a party. I, I forgot about the ocean animals and the benefit aspect. But that's that's fine. I mean it's a $50 cover to get into a bar where there's no entertainment, no free drinks, just a bar with people in it. And I was, it just went against my principles. Yeah. So I was just like, oh my God, are you kidding also me? Also, it was a surprise. It's not like you were mentally prepared. Yeah. Oh, I had no idea. Yeah. yeah. If I knew it was a $50 cover, I'd be like, yeah, whatever. I'll figure that out too. That yeah. might've been the straw that broke the camel's back Maybe it's though. best that you didn't know. It's That's another thing. I didn't know. Had I known, I probably would have stayed on the couch or taken the booty I call. bet you the organizers of the benefit didn't tell yeah, anybody. Yeah, don't tell anybody it's $50 cover. <laughs> they, they had to first make their way here. <laughs> so I, I literally walked outside to think of it. I was like, am I really going to pay? Like, I just, it just didn't. Anyway, I was like. No, I mean, anyone who knows us. I don't, unless like there's a clear cause, yeah. usually when I know about it and there's some, you know, benefit to getting into the benefit, like free drinks or yeah. just a really nice affair. Like this was, this was basically a bar. It was just a bar. And honestly, <laughs> Ocean Animals, that $50 was going in someone's pocket. Like I really. Oh, I hope I, not. It doesn't matter. There, there was some went to Ocean Animals, but mostly to land animals. I would say it was not super specific. It worked in the bar. Like Ocean Animals is kind of vague. It's very broad. Like, like, could you, if you swim in the ocean, could you be an Ocean Animal on occasion? <laughs> oh my God. I think most of the money went to the people in that bar, but that's not important. No. So I went back in. I was like, oh, fine. So I paid the 50 bucks and I, I walk in and I actually ran into another friend of mine named Alex, weirdly. Uh-huh. Not that that's interesting to anyone but me, but it is coincidental. And I hadn't seen him in years. So I'm talking to Alex at the bar. And while I'm talking to Alex, by the way, Alex takes full credit for us meeting. I like hang out with him once a year. Uh-huh. I see him. He's like, here's Andy, the guy who I, Wait, you know. Or a oh, real. Yeah. Why does he take credit I shouldn't for say him? his full name. Um, why does he... Because he... Do I have no idea because he... It should be the other Alex. It makes... Credit. Exactly. Alex... <laughs> now there's another yeah. guy's last name I said. <laughs> he gets full credit because his flaking was fully responsible for me meeting you because otherwise I would have just hung out with him the whole time. Yeah. So anyway, I meet Alex who somehow takes credit for me meeting you. God, <laughs> God bless him. He's a good guy. So I'm talking to Alex and out of the corner of my eye, I see the girl. And I, and I'm the telling Tinder you, girl. the Tinder girl, she looked like her pictures. 
everything was right. Like nothing, nothing weird. I just was like, you know what? I'm just not up for that tonight. I don't know why. I just was like, I don't want to hang out with that person tonight. I don't have the energy for it. And I don't, I can't explain why. I wonder if any man's like seen me across the room and thought that about me. <laughs> like everything's right. But, like, <laughs> I just don't want to do it. <laughs> yeah. I don't think so. You know, it's just interesting to consider. Yeah, that I'm is sure. interesting. I'm sure it has happened. I'm sure it has. Okay, Very rare. So you see the girl, the girl you went all the way downtown and paid yeah, fifty dollars. So I don't want to hang out with her. I'm yeah. talking to Alex. I'm actually using Alex now as a foil. Like I'm trying to like be like, hey, so what's oh, going yeah, on? Yeah, yeah. Like talk to me. I don't want to Do you think she's recognized you? I think she probably saw me. Or maybe she didn't. I don't think she really cared that much. She okay. she was clearly with one or two friends. Okay. So so I'm talking to Alex and then Alex is talking to this other girl who I didn't, I found kind of annoying. And I was just like, I'm tired of this. I want to like go regroup and figure out what I'm doing here. So I, I was like, I'm going to go get a drink, which I, I did. And then I <laughs> snuck around the corner into this room to the left where there was a couch and I just sat down on the couch, okay, which was hiding me from everyone in that front bar. So the girl couldn't see me. Alex couldn't see me. I was just alone. And I was like, what am I doing? Like, do I want to stay here? Like, what did I get myself into? Was this just a mistake? Yeah. Should I go home? And I'll let you okay. proceed. So, okay. Well, I hope this is, this is like a lot of specificity. I mean, people watch a 12 episode season of The Bachelor 10, 15, 20 times over and over again. There's oh, yeah. a lot of redundancy. No, that's, true. that's not boring. inaccurate. I do think that it's basically the same TV show over and over again, just with like It's the same variations. thing over and over again with a tiny bit of manufactured drama. <laughs> For anyone wondering, Andy does not watch The Bachelor with me. He lasted like one or two seasons and clearly... <laughs> It's, it's, it's it, like, okay, I've seen every season. Yeah, it now. ran its course. It definitely, yeah. Um, so I don't have a viewing buddy anymore. It was lovely while it lasted. Yeah, it was nice. Okay, so my end. So I do meet Alexa out for a drink, and I'm like, please come with me. I'm trying to convince her. We're at Lincoln Center, by the way, so at like 65th Street. And she's like, ah, this rain, like I'm just not up for it. So we, have, we share a drink or two, and then we part ways. And I go with my umbrella which is like really straining. I walk to Columbus Circle to get on the train and I remember st like stopping midway down the stairs into the train and thinking, why the hell am I doing this? Wow, like, you had a midway down the stair subway stop yeah. as well. Oh, I never told you that. Wow. Did I not tell you that? No, we both had midway stair <laughs> subway stops. <laughs> Wow. Yeah, I just, it was such Crazy. a struggle to walk those like six blocks to that yeah. subway station. My umbrella was like about to break. And I just had this moment where I was like, I'm going alone to meet this friend that like I've met like a handful of times. I don't know him that well. I don't know anyone at this place. Like what the hell am I doing? Yeah. Should I just turn around? I can, st you don't want to know why. Cause at Columbus circle, that's, I could go downtown to the event or I could go uptown back to the apartment I was staying in the sublet I had. Mm. So I was like, uh, and I don't know. I was just like, I'm going to this thing. I, it was, something was pulling me to it. And I do not believe in that. I don't believe in what I'm talking about. I mean, about. neither of us believe in that as much as anyone cannot believe in that. Yet I sort of believe something happened that night. As Just you. because it worked for us. Like, I feel like a million people around us, it could happen to them and we'd be like, yeah, 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 whatever. You're crazy. And then because it happened yeah. to us, we're like I, confused. It's confused. Yeah. Mainly. Yeah. So I get on the train, I go all the way down to Tribeca, and then I have to walk from the train to the venue. And in that time, my umbrella officially breaks. And I don't mean, oh no, in the stairs at Columbus Circle, the six minute walk, my umbrella, I forgot to mention this, the metal part broke in half. Wow. So that was a moment where I was like, should I just go home? This is, yeah. maybe this is a sign. And then when I walked from in Tribeca from the station to the venue, I was holding like the little metal <laughs> tip, <laughs> like just. And then I I remember just ditching it at the door. I was like, like, I guess yeah. I'm staying here tonight. But my my umbrella when I got to the venue literally looked like in the cartoons where a guy is holding an umbrella, he gets struck by lightning, and yeah. like all the umbrella <laughs> part like falls like, off, <laughs> and what's left is just like the scalp. <laughs> yeah. Yes. So uh -huh. I think we've <laughs> sufficiently described. I, 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 I want everyone to know for sure and never forget. <laughs> this is the worst weather ever. <laughs> okay. So uh, for women, the cover was $20. Mm. 
which anyone who knows me, like I do not pay cover for things. Yeah. I just don't like, I don't think it's necessary, but I, I again, cannot. it was like, Oh, it's a benefit. I yeah. came all this way. So, yeah. and I did not know about beforehand, but $20 is not $50. No, $50 is meaningful cover. Oh, $50, $50 is like getting to the point where you could buy a really nice, not really nice, yeah. but you could have like a very decent dinner. That's like a bad new year's Eve cover. That's like a cheap, I'm saying a cheap yes, new year's Eve cover. That's exactly yeah. what that is. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Or like a good Halloween party cover. Anyway, go ahead. I don't think we've ever paid $50 cover for Halloween. I'm just saying if you were in the market for paying for a good Halloween party, $50 is a reasonable cover. No, you're right. And you're expecting decorations. And free drinks. Not free all night, but a couple drinks. Well, maybe an hour. Yeah, an hour open open bar. bar. Yeah, Yeah. some some popcorn. (laughs) You probably sound really cheap. I just don't like paying to pay money. It's a principle I don't need to tell you. It's totally a principle. Okay, so I go in and I text Jonathan and I'm like, hey, I'm here. And he's like, oh... I had to run back home to get something uh, like I'll Coke. see. <laughs> we don't know that for sure. I don't know that. I'm just, I'm just, <laughs> I, I don't know. Anything. We don't know that for sure. Uh, but, <laughs> but I'm pretty much alone and I'm, and I'm like, okay. And he's like, I'll you know, I'll, I'll be there soon. Like I'll see you. And I was like, Ugh. so I didn't know anyone. And I was already regretting my decision. And yeah, I remember buying, I think I bought a drink. I went pee and then I was like, I guess I'll I'll just find a place to sit. And so then I went to that back room and I saw a spot on that sofa and I was like, to you, I said, is anyone sitting here? And you said, no, go ahead. And I was like, thanks. And then I sat down and you made no impression on me whatsoever. That was You were just like a, a, a body. A body that was occupying part of the sofa. Isn't it so weird how someone can go from being a complete stranger to, yeah, to, a, to the a, most important person in your life. It's very strange. Oh, I think. Ah, ah. I mean, so that's a good, we have like. To get the door. <laughs> Where are we? Oh, yeah. I sit down on the sofa. Okay. And you don't see me at all. I'm I like, don't. I'm you like are a just. You are a, flesh. a body. I didn't right. even register like. Like your ethnicity, what you're wearing, like n- nothing. You like. Uh. I was just like. Is anyone sitting? You know, you know, when you talk to someone, but you don't see them. Yeah. You were just like a means to an end. I wanted to sit and I had to. Wow. <laughs> wow. That was harsh. It's harsh. <laughs> well, you're married to me now, so. <laughs> um, okay. So, yeah. So, I, this girl who's super glamorous and obviously gorgeous sits down next to me. That's sweet. But you, I, th- I thought you were really sure if you uh, <laughs> Not really my type. Um, I don't want to get into details. That would never really, like, that, I got to say, I, I used to think that that would, like, the first time you told me, I was kind of like, how dare you? But then I was like, that actually is a bigger compliment than if I were your type. Yes. It's a massive compliment. Okay. So, I mean, since then, I have fully embraced the half Asian. Like, I'm... I'd, I, I'm down with half Asians fully. <laughs> like if I went back in time, I would clearly be more excited about her sitting down. I probably would have blown it too excited. So that might've been one of the reasons why I was able to keep it together is because you weren't my sweet spot. Interesting. Yeah. So anyway, I'm, I'm looking at you and I'm thinking like you're texting, you're just sitting there texting. And I, oh, kept thinking, I hate that. And I kept thinking to myself, like, I know you were texting your friend Jonathan to see where he was. And, and uh, you know, a girl sitting on a couch alone, the phone is a good crutch. Again, Not just a girl, anyone, anyone, anyone. Anyone sitting alone in a public place, the yeah. phone is a great crutch. So you're sitting there texting. But often it's you're actually using it. You're not just like, no, no. I think you were time. actually using okay. it. Okay, I'm that's, not defending myself. <laughs> yeah, no, I don't. So you're texting, and I'm sitting there looking at you. And I'm trying to figure you out because I'm, I'm just like, what first goes my head is like, is this girl really not noticing me at all? Does she have any intention of sitting there wanting to talk to me? And I'm slowly. That is such a, like a vain, like perspective. No, I, I mean, I, I love you, but to be like, oh, did this girl sit here because of me? Yeah, but oftentimes that would be the case. Even if I was, it doesn't matter. That happens a lot. Like a girl 
I'm assuming most women know that if they sit next to a guy and there's no one else around, there's a good chance that guy's going to start talking to them, whether they like it or not. So they probably do a okay, little thinking. Okay. I give, I'll give you that because I have done that before. Yeah, I thought it was reckless of you to sit down next to me without the intention of speaking with me. <laughs> reckless. reckless. So I'm sitting there looking at you. I'm like, who's this, this very glamorous, beautiful girl who's not totally my type, but the dark lipstick definitely helped a lot in that department. So... I'm like, is this girl's here? Well, she wants to talk to me. Is she just sitting there like looking for guys when she's alone? Is she texting like a million friends who are coming to cock block me in like 10 minutes? Like, I don't know what's going on. <laughs> so I'm sort of sizing you up. And I'm also a little intimidated because you definitely seem like you could be a total bitch. <laughs> I, I mean, I get that a lot. Yeah. I would rather seem like a total bitch than a total floozy. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 But yeah. I mean, I've gotten that from both men and women. I, I definitely have resting bitch face. Yeah. A little bit. Yeah. I'm okay with and that. And you can also I've turn it on. Terms. You can have not resting bitch face when you want to. Yeah. But even then it's like, then I'm like trying really hard and. It's more cold than bitch. You're, you're more like ice than bitch. Yeah. I definitely an ice queen. And I remember being told during the bachelor filming process, a producer told me that. Yeah. Because I cried and he was like, you know, it was good of you. Like, I'm, it, was, it looked good that you cried because you were coming off kind of like an ice queen before. Mm. And I was like, Ugh. anyway. But I can see how that would I mean, a, girl's like, a girl like you has to put up walls sometimes. A lot of, a lot of predators out there. <laughs> so uh, anyway, I'm sitting there sizing you up. And I'm just thinking to myself, like, I might, I should probably say something to this girl. Like I, I, why, why am I doing all this calculus? Like, why don't I just see what's up? But I was a little intimidated. As I said, you were just a little intimidating. Like I, I had to kind of get up a little energy to talk to you. So I kept thinking to myself, like, she seems out of place here. Like you seem like you should be somewhere else. And it's funny. I feel like I get that everywhere I go. <laughs> Well, as long as you keep going to shitty places, that's a good sign. <laughs> so I'm sitting there thinking that, and I'm like, all right, so just ask her what you're thinking. And I said, so what are you doing here? Oh. And that was what I said. Your first, I mean, that technically was not your first words to me, but what we were choosing to believe those were the first Wait, words. what were the first words? Like, yes, no one's sitting here? Yeah. <laughs> I don't think that's, yeah, I think we're going to leave that one out. <laughs> okay. The first words were. Or maybe it was no, go ahead. I don't, I don't know. The first words were, so what are you doing here? Yeah. And on our, on your first birthday, when we were together, I, I painted that. And it's fantastic. It's still hanging up on the wall. It's just the, one of my, it was the, my favorite birthday gift I've ever gotten in my life by far. Oh yeah. Actually the painting, we'll show the painting at the end because the painting really does have yeah. the rain Everything. and you were on my right. It, yeah. it captures it. Yeah. So there'll be good context yeah. for it. If anyone cares and makes yeah. it to the end, if anyone needs that'll more, be a reward for making it to the more end. More content about us meeting each other. <laughs> okay, so I'm going from my perspective. Yeah. I remember, so I, you just really weren't there to me. I, I, I guess I am kind of a cold ice queen because I just, you made no impression on me whatsoever. I was on my phone just feeling like, did you, uh, let me ask you this. Did you for one second think like in your woman brain, like this guy to my right might start talking to me? No, it didn't even occur to me. Wow. God. I was just, in, some. you know me, I really am a bit of a blinders person. Yeah. That's why sometimes people think I'm really rude because I'm just like this. But So I could, someone could be like, you know, on the other side of the street. Yeah, yeah, and I yeah. don't make, and they might be waving at me and I'm just like in my, own, I'm just one of those people that's like kind of in their, own duom a lot of the time you were just a human sharing like you could have been a female for all I know like I, it was just made no impression on me so I'm on my phone and you say so what are you doing here and I remember I finished my text that mm -hmm. I was writing before I remember that too yeah it was like it was like a full two second beat <laughs> like you were like Even in longer. the process of like you were like like turning, like, like, oh, I'll get to you in a yeah, second, yeah. but I have a text I got to finish. Yeah. With, so. Oh, yeah. I didn't put anything on hold to answer you. I was just like. And then I looked. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's exactly what, that's exactly what I remember. And I, I said, I've been asking myself the same question. Yes. And I remember in that moment it was the first time I looked at your face and I like registered what you looked like. And I remember just like having my like you took my breath away. Wow. 
I thought you were so handsome. Oh. In a, in a Richard Geary way. Hmm. <laughs> do you, what do you have to say? To I'll just, I'm just bathing in that. <laughs> so I had a similar moment when you spoke, um, the tenor, the, the timbre of your voice. The tenor. I do have a low voice. Was totally different than what I expected. I expected it to be high pitched and annoying. Sorry. <laughs> well, you all, we should also mention that you have like you really have specific tastes with voices and you're really attuned to them. Voice like you, is so a, someone, a woman's voice could be the reason why you date them or not. A hundred percent. I'm all about voice. Yeah. Interestingly, my mother met my father on a blind date and the first interaction they had was on the phone. And she said the second she heard his voice on the phone, she knew he was, she was going to marry him. That's sweet. Uh, she may be lying, but that's what she always tells me. So she's stuck it's to that story. It's kind of easier to say those things in <laughs> retrospect. Like, I think I was telling her story. Of course, there's going to be a bit of that like, yeah. hindsight being 2020 thing. But uh, truthfully, you really did. Like, when I first saw you, I was just like. Oh, well, I felt the same when I heard your voice. And I really, I know you still to this day, I think you question this. But when I heard your voice, the way you spoke, how even in one quick sentence, not even a sentence, like a phrase. I could tell that you, so many things about you, that you were intelligent, that you were demure, that you were well-spoken, that you were, you were, you were of the world, like you were worldly. You, I mean, so, so classy, just so much information was, was given to me from that. <laughs> Give little, me a lot of credit for. <laughs> no, I really, I, and I, and to this day, I stand by that when I heard you say that first phrase, I was like, there's a very good chance I'm going to, if she goes for it. I'm going to date this girl and there's a decent chance I'm going to get married. To no. Her. I swear I, may I get terrible diseases. <laughs> don't say that. No, actually I don't want to say that, especially now. No diseases. But um yeah, I, I thought that there was a chance I was going to marry you. Wait, so what you're saying would suggest that you then believe in love at first here phrase. <laughs> Love at first audio. Yeah, it was it was really strong. I've never felt that way before. Like I I was almost certain that when you turned around and said something to me, if you did, you might have just been like, and eh, nah, not interested. But God, do women do that? That's not harsh. really, but in that but you seemed really not nice. Like Damn. it seemed like you were capable of that. So it God. was I gotta work on that. <laughs> yeah, it was incredible. Okay, so we'll, that's, thank you. That's very sweet. I, I, it took me a little longer to know I was going to marry you, but you definitely, I was, you were a lot what? more, <laughs> you were a lot more my physical type, though, than I think right. I was yours. Yeah. And then uh, apparently my voice was, mm. <laughs> just did it for you. Mm. Um, so we ended up talking for a while that night. Yeah. A long time, like hours. Hours. I, I'd say maybe 30 to 60 minutes into our conversation, Jonathan did arrive. Mm -hmm. And by then I was so invested in, like, our conversation that I like gave, like stood up, gave him a hug. We talked, you know, five, 10 minutes. And I was like, yeah, I'll see you. Like, see you soon. Like, like I'm just like still talking here. And he was like, okay. And he had other friends. So it wasn't like I was like blowing him off or anything. And we ended up talking for like, what, four hours. Mm, but yeah. till like, till they the, closed till two in the morning, pretty much until they were closing. Yeah. Um, oh, that was so nice. It was a nice night. And then we shared a cab home. Oh, the cab story. This is cute. By the, by the time we exited, uh, it wasn't raining anymore. Mm -hmm. And we got in a cab and it smelled really bad. Mm -hmm. Real bad. <laughs> Food and bodily it issues. It smelled, yeah. It smelled like food, like really intense food. It like, smelled like someone had gone to a public restroom, sat on the toilet and ate like chicken tikka masala for like three hours. What, while having not bathed and, for and while like smoking. a month. Yeah. Well, oh, yeah. While not having... Exactly. Sorry to forget <laughs> good the body odor aspect. In while addition, not bathed. <laughs> no bathing, bodily fluids of not good origin, wow, and food that wasn't smelling good, and the general <laughs> smoky someone had been smoking. Yeah, it was a real rough scene. It was a scene. mix of all these flavors you don't want it, it was in like, a romantic setting yes it was it was like in a, a car caricature of what people who don't live in new york think a new york cab smells like yeah <laughs> totally so and so it's quite a long cab ride home and there was a point where do you want to tell us well i was 
I knew I was going to try to kiss her in the cab. Like I wasn't going to let that night go without a kiss. It was very important. So I leaned over to kiss her, <laughs> my move, my power move. And, uh, in the middle of it, I just held back and I was like, I don't want our first. You were like close. You were like. I was right almost. in. I was like, it was within three inches. Yeah. And I was willing, like I was into you. Yeah. I, th- it was, I knew that there was a kiss that would could be had at yeah, that moment. I wasn't going to. Right. It wasn't like when I first saw you. So, and I pulled back because I really thought to myself, there's something special happening here. And I don't want our first kiss to be in this like. Stinky cat. Charnel house. <laughs> So, and you said that. I did say like, that. Like you were this close and you were like, eh, never mind. Like you pulled away. Wanna, yeah. And you said. I want to wait. I yeah, wanna you wait said, I, I already know I'm going to kiss you. I don't want our first kiss to be ruined by the stinky cab. I would rather wait. And by the way, I said that not audibly to the driver. I'm not a jerk. Like I want yeah. everyone to know. I didn't say like, I don't want to, I want to wait to kiss you. <laughs> not in this stinky cab. <laughs> like it wasn't like that. <laughs> Uh, that's cute. Yeah. So, and then we, you got dropped off first and then I got dropped off 30 blocks later and I had a text waiting for me from you that said, I hope you didn't die of asphyxiation. <laughs> <laughs> and then I actually think the next part of the story is one of the cutest. Oh God. Like, blah, we're so yeah. disgusting. This is where you would insert like green face vomit emojis. Mm. <laughs> so if there stop? was anyone left listening to insert things. <laughs> So, so, so go, go ahead. Should we tell this part? Which I don't know what part the you're next, talking about. Like our first date. Oh, the first date. Yeah. I mean, I mean, you can get, you tell this. It's oh, good. Okay. Good I can tell you. you're fading. No, I, I just. I, I can I, usually get about an hour out of Andy and I feel like we're nearing that point. I think this is the addendum. This is like the, the, addendum. the, the, the um, epilogue. Okay. okay. Because I do feel like this next part of the story is sort of crucial to the. Sure. Oh God, I'll just stop talking and tell it. No, tell it. So we get home and. We autom- like we're immediately like, when can we see each other again? And what I liked so much is how it was really completely no games, no fucking games. It was just like, I want to see you again. I want to see you again. When are you free? When can we see each other again? Like mm-hmm. it was just none of this bullshit. And I was like, well, I'm free tomorrow at brunch. And of course, at this point, it's like three in the morning, maybe later. Yeah. And you were like, okay. And I was like, but we don't have to like wake up in time or anything. How about we just wake up naturally and then we'll just check in. Sure. And no pressure. Like if you don't, if you change your mind. And so we did exactly that. And I remember how you handled this. And if any men listen to this and they can take notes on how to plan a first date with no actual planning. I mean, obviously you did not have time to plan this date, but I just love how you gave me an option. It was... Not only did you commit, follow through and like want to see me again, the brunch date that we had like talked about, you know, maybe slightly drunkenly at 3.30 in the morning, you were like, okay, you have two options. The first is we can get, you know, traditional brunch at this one place and then we can blah, 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 blah. Or option two is we can go up to this park. There's a really beautiful, what's the thing up there? Oh, um, Fort Tryon Park. Oh, the castle. Yeah, there's like a castle. And and there's this, you know, it's more of an adventure. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I'm up for adventure. It was just such a sweet thing to like, you had put thought into these two options. And, and it's like, it's up to you, you pick. I I always like it when men do that. Not not to belittle you, because other -hmm. (laughs) other men have done it. No, but I, I love it when men take, it's like a combination of taking control and doing the planning, but also letting the woman play a part in it in the final decision making process. It's just a sweet touch. But it was also, it was, I was also feeding you an opportunity to not make the wrong decision. <laughs> I was hoping. There was no wrong decision. No, I was hoping you didn't, uh, I go, let's just play it safe. You know, let's just go to the. Oh yeah. No, we, I totally picked adventure. And we yeah, I was up. very relieved you did. We forgot to mention the oh, night no. we met. Wait, what? The ne- so like an, two hours into our conversation the night we met, I'll never forget. I can't believe I forgot to mention this. You took, you just sort of leaned back and you were like, would you mind going to the bathroom and just taking off your lipstick? <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, oh, no. <laughs> I said, you can take me out. And if you want, I, I won't wear oh, lipstick. Oh, yeah, it was a good call. 
Oh, and you also said, and take your hair down. Take off your oh, lipstick right. and, and let your hair down. So you down. made a mental note of that, and you're like, you're well, not kidding. it wasn't getting... a mental note. I said, if you take me on a date, I'll wear my hair down. And I uh, no, I mean, a mental I, note. I fully stated right, it wasn't what I would too do. much of a note. Right. <laughs> and so I did that. I had my hair down, and I just wore lip balm or whatever, yeah. and didn't have much face on. You definitely like a bare face. Mm-hmm. And, and I purposely wore something more fitted, because... <laughs> I guess weren't sure what my body looked like. Caveman needs to <laughs> see caveman. curves. Caveman, God. At least you can admit that it's a very cavemanish oh. thing. I do think it's gotten way worse now, actually, now, like with dating. That, like, I feel like men are like, this is my type physically, and because I have a million options at my fingertips, I can just yeah. shop. Literally. But, but you did have a particularly non form fitting outfit. Like, I had no idea. What was going on? That's None. Good. That's fine. None. You got to know me for my personality. Mm-hmm. <laughs> anyway, so yeah, I showed up. Oh, when I saw you walk, when I first saw you that morning, yeah. I was com- literally, literally breath taken away. Like I, I was hyperventilating. <laughs> hyperventilating. Yeah. That's sweet. You were like the most beautiful human I had seen That's sweet. in months. Oh, I love you. In days. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> People go get yelled at like, you're the most beautiful girl in this whole bar. Like, what? <laughs> just this bar? <laughs> that is no, a but you were person. you were the most I, I had I was absolutely blown away. That's as sweet. anyone would have been. Not like I have some special taste. You were just as beautiful as a human being could be. <laughs> Thanks. It's true. <laughs> I don't know what to say to that. I'm not Thank going you. out on a limb. Uh, suffice to say we we had a lovely date the whole lovely. day. Lovely. And then we had our first kiss, which... Wasn't good. It was not good, not good. for either party. But what I loved is that we were immediately were like, that wasn't good. Yeah, we joked about we it. Jo- it was, we were so confident that we could find it that we joked about how bad it was. And then yeah. we tried again later in the evening. So we spent good. the whole day together and it was great. Yeah. Wait, only yeah? No, I mean, it's so obvious. What do I have to like be? Yeah, of course it was great. I married you. <laughs> That's the answer to every one of those questions. That's Andy's get out of jail free card always. Whenever I'm like, oh, you're like, I married you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Should we wrap up there? Yeah, I think that's about it. Okay. So let's do a day by day since then. What happens? <laughs> uh, what else? Oh, I, so yeah, I think one of the takeaways is... Um. If we're going to talk about takeaways, take there, there are lessons Part two, to be learned. Takeaways <laughs> uh, is that online dating, even though it's terrible, you never know where it may lead you. Because even though we did not meet online, we never would have met if I hadn't met Jonathan on Match and you had not met this girl yeah. on Tinder, and we had ended up in the same place. Definitely. And also, if you're thinking about saying something to someone that you think you might like, don't ever not <sighs> say something. I cannot stress You'll this You'll regret it so badly. You'll regret it so quickly, and maybe think about it for days or weeks to come. Or Yeah, or but even if you don't think about it, like... You, it's, it really is one of those sliding doors things. Oh, yeah. Like you, it could be a whole other existence. I just don't see why people don't talk to strangers. You gotta, you got you gotta just, um, it's a numbers game and you gotta keep trying. Yeah. But don't make it sound like it's just a numbers game. Like I think when someone sees someone and they're in the same place at the same time, like just. Oh, I'm not saying you should say hello to every single human being of the opposite sex you see, but I'm saying when you see someone, you're like, I really... Yeah, but saying it's a numbers game suggests that it is. It's a numbers of the good ones. I, that's like a total like, Trump thing to say. It's like I'm trying to like totally re- revisit what I said. And no, it's not what I said. It's the right thing that I said. I, okay, in this scenario, I'm, I'm right. You're right. It's not a numbers game. It's but not a numbers game. But if you game. do have a feeling about someone... Just like talk to them. Yes. It also is a numbers game, but unrelated to that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Anything, any other? I also think that, you know, like you really should get out, you know, when you, when you, when you have opportunities to go to something that's a little different, you know, that's I, not the usual, just meet your friends at the bar. Like you should try it. Also keep an open mind because I wasn't your type. Yes. And like, I didn't even see you in the beginning. Yeah. Like, I just think that it's so easy for people to be like, Oh, that's not who I'm normally into, but you just never, yeah. you just never know. And don't make out with girls in stinky cabs. <laughs> yes. Not a good look. <laughs> oh, that like, even though that was horribly self-indulgent, it was just kind of fun to revisit that. Yeah. 
Oh, I love you. I love you too. So I think that's it for episode one. And moving forward, I think we just sort of want to talk about relationships of all kinds and maybe have a topic per episode. We really don't have any formal structure here. So maybe one episode will be long, another one will be short, but we just want to talk about things that I think are of interest and like, oh, we really want to do a dating first date do's and don'ts. Mm -hmm. And I really want to have an episode about jealousy. Mm -hmm. I think jealousy is like the, you know, that's a big one. It's a big one. And as anyone might gather from listening to this episode, Andy and I are not super jealous. And so we definitely have strong opinions about jealousy. And yeah, if like the whole point with Dear Shandy is for it to feel interactive. The reason why we're even doing this, it was never a, a goal for us to start a podcast, but it was so requested that, you know, here we are. So I want this to feel interactive and like a conversation with you guys. So if anyone has dating or relationship questions, we would love to hear them and give our unbiased opinion, I think. That's right. Yeah. Okay. So thanks for tuning in, guys. Thank and you. And see you next time.